Ms. Susan Baustian is director of the franchise Once Upon a Child, located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Once Upon a Child are independently owned resale businesses that purchase and sell used and new children's clothing and merchandise. Franchised in 1993, these stores have become a rapidly growing component of the Winmark Corporation family of brands. Welcome, Ms. Baustian. Thank you, Chairman Altmeyer, for having me here to testify today. My name is Susan Boston and I am the director of Once Upon a Child Stores for Winmark Corporation. Today I'm speaking on behalf of our hundreds of stores in what we call the industry of gently used products. Winmark Corporation owns two franchises that have been in business for over 20 years. Once Upon a Child, a store selling used children's goods, and Plate Against Sports, they buy and sell new and used sporting goods that have been significantly impacted by this bill. Although our, our company headquarters are based in Minnesota, we have over 520 franchises across the country. What that amounts to is over 500 store owners worrying about whether or not they comply with the law, 5,000 employees scrambling to figure out how to comply, and over 200 vendors feeling they do not have the resources to test their products to ensure that they comply with these new standards. Last year alone, our two brands serviced over 7 million parents that are now confused as to what is safe or not for their children. The ill-executed implementation of this legislation has brought fear into the industry, and that fear, especially in economic times like these, can bring a halt to successful and productive businesses. Our franchises have a lot on the line that is driving this fear. Most of them have business loans where their homes are on the line. They have a family in which their business provides for, and they have a strong sense of giving back to the community in that they are being at the forefront of recycling. They buy and sell product that children no longer use or have outgrown. They are fearful that the CPSIA will force them to give up their American dream, which is owning their own business. I think what is really unfortunate about this debate over the CPSIA, it has led to finger pointing on an issue that we really all agree, that we want to ensure the safety and protection of our children. Our store owners have dedicated their lives to providing safe, fun, educational products for children of all ages and are now having to rethink how they can continue to offer these products without violating the law. We want to work with the Consumer Product Safety Commission to comply with this law, but the guidance issues thus far has been difficult to understand for many of our store owners. We do not want to have to shut our doors over legislation that we all agree could help children if implemented in an effective and productive way, but we need the help of CPSC and Congress to clarify what is required for our store owners. The CPSC has come out and stated that resellers, such as Once Upon a Child, Played Against Sports, as well as Goodwill, Salvation Army, ARC, church organizations, garage resellers, consignment stores, um, anybody that has a small business that does resell items, do not have to test products, but our businesses are still liable if those products with banned substances are sold. The CPSC recently produced a handbook for resale stores and product resellers with the purpose being, and I quote, to help identify the types of products that are affected and to understand how to comply with the law so you can keep safe Un or keep unsafe products out of the hands of consumers. Unlike the information that the CPSC supplies regarding recalls, which is a very specific list by brand, model number, the handbook is too general and to effectively determine which products are safe to buy and sell. For example, on page 7 of the handbook, it indicates, and I quote, that items made of wood without paint, surface coating, or hardware are okay to sell, and I unquote. It also indicates that, as I, and I quote again, <clears throat> Clothes with rhinestones, metal, or vinyl plastic snaps, zippers, grommets, closures, or appliques are best for us to test. We could either contact the manufacturer or we should choose to not sell them. Unlike retailers of new products, our franchisees across the country really have no idea how to determine if the painted blocks, toy trucks, dolls, stuffed giraffe, or anything else that they're bringing in and they're buying and reselling contains lead paint or are made up of dangerous lead components or toxic plastics. It will be a violation of the act to sell an item that is known to have more than the acceptable limit. This violation can be a fine of $5,000 for each violation and that fine increases to $100,000 on August 14th. Being the handbook gives us only guidance on determining what items are safe, the only way to be certain would be to test the product. However, being each piece that is bought and sold is unique, it would be very costly to do that. With a house on the line, a family to care for, and a potential liability to deal with, fear has really taken over for many of our retailers. Last year alone, Once Upon a Child paid families $45 million for children items that we purchased for resale, which generated $120 million in sales for our franchisees. For families, 
The money that they receive from selling these children's items can be used to supplement the parents' income or may be used to buy items for their children that they may otherwise can't afford. For business owners, this, this income helped provide for their family. But now, many business owners and parents are worried that they won't know when a snap or zipper contains lead, and like toys, they have no way to test these items. If there's really one thing that's become clear through this process, it's that we as an industry need more guidance and we need more time to sift through inventory, understand new regulations, and find cheaper, more efficient ways for testing products. For my industry, it's critical that we are able to understand how we can better sort through the inventory and confidently buy and sell children's items without fear of selling something that is unsafe for a child or facing consequences of violating the act. We need to know specifically what items are deemed unsafe for our children. I thank you for calling this hearing today on the impact of this bill.